The Timeless Show once again takes us to a historical moment and tells us about someone that was pretty interesting in real life. For a show that's pretty fanciful and about time travel, we get a lot of history lessons in this. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Hollywood Land, episode 3 of season 2 of Timeless. And alright, so... Our bad guys have taken the time war to a whole new level. Not only did last week they have suicide bombers, but this week they're going after movies. And as someone who really appreciates the way stories unfold and understands how some stories interact with other stories and that they inspired them, the idea of Citizen Kane not being made just drives me up the wall with all the unintended consequences that could show up because of the word rosebud. If you haven't seen it, I... It, it's even in my spoiler alert thing. But alright, for those of you that don't know what I do here, I take apart stories as they come about and review them. I do TV shows, movies, books, comic books, you name it, whatever hits my fantasy. And then every Sunday I come up with a theory video, there's one up right now. If that sounds interesting, click subscribe, because we are going on the wild mystery tour that is what Written House is doing in Hollywood land. So we figured out that they have sleeper agents last week. And we figured out that they're trying to change history. And this week, we get the fun little historical moment where we learn about Hedy Lamar. Now, I actually saw her once before in a time travel show. They did a whole thing on Legends of Tomorrow about her. And she's really interesting. But before we talk too much about what's going on, let's throw this up there. Pay attention to Rosebud. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. And even before we get back in time... We have the Flynn thing going on again. And I have to say, the idea of some prisoner stabbing him in the prison, that he has no problem, and they're all like, oh, what would make us think that that was Rittenhouse? How could they get you in here? Yeah, how could the vast conspiracy that somehow funded a time machine possibly pull off what random gangbangers, mafiosos, people with some money and a grudge, pull off all the friggin' time? Hmm, let's think about that. But alright, I'm kind of curious what Lucy's play is. She says she can get him out. Without the CIA backing, I'm not quite sure how. Meanwhile, our main crew has now had to go back in time. I do like the fact that they referenced the fact that they have to now steal outfits instead of having them made for them because we have issues with the time stuff. And that could lead to some possible fun in the future. And stealing from the prop department was just brilliant. Although I do wonder how bad Wyatt sings, because you know how bad I sing. Lucy wasn't too bad, though. And Rufus, quick thinking with everything you did, as usual. But there's a subplot, where we are dealing with these premonitions, these visions of what's to come or what may come. And I did like the whole, hey, I don't like doctors things, because I'll tell you right now, I don't like going to doctors. I also have the bad feeling whenever I do that they're going to find something horrible. But sorry, let's talk time travel for a second. So, we have a guy drop his son off in Hollywood way back when, and then leave him there. And his son's whole plan is to get himself up and running to become one of the heads of Paramount Studios. Now, first things first, that's brilliant. Because as we all know, anyone who watches my channel knows that I believe that the way we influence people is in storytelling. And as such... Being in charge of one of the major storytelling units is a way to control hearts and minds. A way to get people to think in certain ways. And doing that by doing propaganda and by changing things is brilliant. But we have a problem. And that is, when he talks about this whole Jurassic Park idea, I want you to think about this for a second. Jurassic Park hit at just the right moment. Not only did it have a brilliant director, not only was it based on a best-selling novel, but the technology was so new, the idea of special effects like that. And that man moment and, mo and just feeling can't necessarily be captured. Going back in time and knowing some of the greatest stories of all time wouldn't work. If I went back in time and tried to write a Song of Fire and Ice, even if I brought a copy of the book to just copy wholesale, there's no guarantee that in 1972 it would sell as well as in 2018. And having said that, 
I do love the fact that the Fresh Prince of Bel Air does not appear to be as brilliant of a um, poem as uh, they would have thought. I, I guess that's also another thing that changes. Historically, music, the way we speak, the, just the commonality and how we express ourselves changes so much that, of course, Hedy Lamar does not think the same thing that we thought in the 90s was awesome, was awesome in the 60s. But let's talk about Hedy Lamar for a minute. She was born at the turn of the century, right at the end of World War I. She played a pivotal part in World War II, and was an actress, and oh yeah, yes she did appear naked in film. But long before the phrase slut-shaming came about, she was a brilliant scientist. Like I said, Legends of Tomorrow did a whole big thing where they made her the hero of the episode. It was pretty cool. And I'm very glad that Timeless takes their time to give us these little history lessons, because it's kind of fun. But Rittenhouse has decided, for some reason, that stealing Citizen Kane is the answer. And remember just a minute ago I was saying it was a brilliant idea. Hearts and minds change whole zeitgeists of how society works by changing history of the stories we tell. The problem is, is that by taking one out, like Citizen Kane, that has so many ripples through time, so many people that were influenced by that story, that it's just going to... I, I can't imagine how you could possibly plan for that. And the propaganda that you're going to put forward in the newspaper, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it would work. Meanwhile, the love story between Lucy and Wyatt has heated up, to say the least. I have really loved the whole conversation. While I was the nerd in school, yeah, the beautiful nerd, now I want someone to sing the song, uh, You Didn't Know You Were Beautiful. But um, mixing that with the, I didn't get to go to prom because I was drinking on campus. It's interesting. I would have picked Wyatt for the jock, not for the uh, stoner or the uh, troublemaker. But we have learned a bit about his troubled past. Personal note, I did not get to go to my prom because I could not get a date. And that kind of sucked, and when they talk about no regrets, that's one of those things that, even now, pushing 40, is one of those regrets that's come up a couple of times in my life. I mean, I'm not the same scared and crazy and impersonal kid I was back then that couldn't talk to someone. Hell, I have my own YouTube channel now where all I do is talk to people, and I work customer service, so I can talk. Funny thing, though, I wish I could have spoken like this when I was in high school. Alright, anyway. So Rittenhouse has this plan to use fake news to change people's mind and force propaganda. And again, I still say the unintended consequences of what happens when Citizen Kane doesn't get released and it changes movie landscape is just too risky. And wouldn't there be easier ways for them to go about this? Like, it seems like such a weird plan, get someone in charge of Paramount Studios so that they can steal Citizen Kane, so that they can then use that to force the guy to give them a newspaper article. Seriously, couldn't they have just gotten a writer up and run coming and had him work with that guy? But it's not like the good guys are exactly teeming with brilliant ideas either. When Rufus tells Hedy Lamar to hold on to the patent that he was already told she lets go. Whew. Talk about the unintended consequences. And again, she only died about 20 years ago. So I want you to think about the fact that how much history she could change. Now, there's also the uh, little moment where they have the uh, firefight. That's kind of cool. I have to say, it's an action show, they do action well, but nothing really to write home about tonight. And then there's the whole thing back in the present day. We have what's going on with Flynn, what's going on with Gia, and you know what? I'm not quite sure what's going on with her and the whole time vision thing, but I'm very interested in it. Flynn, on the other hand, we all know what's coming. We all know that he's joining the team, right? I am left wondering, though. Even without Flynn's help, they've managed to do some pretty good damage to Rittenhouse's plan. How many dominoes do they need to stop from falling in order to stop Rittenhouse entirely? 
yes, Rittenhouse can keep adapting and trying again as long as they have the mothership. But realistically, they've done a lot of damage in just two or three episodes. The plan for Flynn to escape reminds me of Justice League 1 million, when they realize that they have all the time in the world to make up a backup plan. Or maybe Bill and Ted remember the trash can. But either way, it's a time travel staple. And they come home to find out that, of course, the world is just a little bit different. Because Lahedi Lamar is the new Bill Gates, I guess. Okay. I mean, you know, that's, I guess, a happily ever after. But then I have a question about the whole love story between Lucy and Wyatt, which, again, I'm really appreciating. Are there ever stories where when the people have sex for the first time, it's not, oh, that night was amazing? Like, I... I, I know I'm probably insulting myself here, but I don't think every first time I was with someone it was amazing. Hmm. I'm normally more in the aiming for at least we had fun and I didn't do or say anything embarrassing. Hmm. All right. But then, of course, they figure out how to get Wyatt off the team and how to hit him where it hurts. Rittenhouse seems to have gone back in time and changed the day that his wife died. And that. That is going to screw with it. But what do you think? What did you think of tonight's episode? What did you think of the Bill and Ted's remember the trash can slash leave the key and gas mask? And most importantly, do you trust Flynn? I trust him to be Flynn, at least. For now, I'd like to ask you to like and share this video. And of course, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and join our little community here as we talk about how and why we tell stories, as we figure out how the time travel works, and whether or not Rittenhouse is going to pull off the impossible and somehow make me think that their plan actually is a viable plan, or if that map they drew is actually just a lot of BS, because we're going to see. I hope you have a good night, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of timeless and all the stories we tell.